Hi folks, it's Wednesday. I am once again sitting in the world's ugliest chair. Let me show it to you here for a second, those of you who aren't familiar with it. Oh yeah, look at this thing. It's got water mills on it in orange flowers. Beautiful. And we are reading through 1 Peter together. Today, we're in chapter 5. So if you haven't read 1 Peter 5 already, that's the most important thing. Just stop right now, go and read 1 Peter 5. And then we invite you at 7.30 this evening to join us via Zoom and we will discuss it. There's some great stuff buried in here. And what I really want to point out to you, there's stuff about it. Hey, how did Peter compose his letters? Which is actually a really interesting question. Uh, because there are some style differences between 1st and 2nd Peter, but there's an answer right here in chapter 5 as to why that should be. You'll see that in verse 12. I'm just going to let you look it up yourself. Um, what I want to leave you with here just for a couple of minutes is a little bit of encouragement here, though, from verse 10. 1st Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Because I don't know about you, this has not been the best spring of my existence. Um, it's been a rough few months here, uh, as my wife says, uh, cancer, plague, and death, and um, yeah, but in chapter 5, verse 10 here, there is a, a blessing, a promise, and it's very simple, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Jesus Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. It's a short blessing, but there's a lot packed into it. Um, I want you to notice, first of all, though, that like all biblical promises, this is not naive well-wishing, right? This is, Peter is not saying, uh, oh, it'll all be okay. He starts off by saying, after you have suffered a little while. Scripture recognizes that life involves suffering. Suffering is and can be used by God for redemptive purposes. It's both essential and something that in the end will be done away with. After you have suffered for a little while. After you've suffered for a little while, what's going to happen? Well, the promise is that God will restore you, right? The, the Greek word there is katartase. Uh, katartase. Uh, it means uh, cleaning, cleansing. Right, sweeping. It's used to describe uh, pruning grapevines and uh, cleaning up a house. Um, suffering is not what God in originally intended for humanity, but it's also not meaningless. Uh, the suffering of Christ on the cross brought forgiveness from sins. God can use your own trials and difficulties to, to sweep out a lot of the dirt that's uh, clinging in the corners to, to restore you. The second promise here is that God will confirm you. One of the results of hardship is that people respond one of two ways, right? They're either broken by it or they are strengthened in their conviction and faith. Um, this doesn't mean you can sit back and expect uh, a great faith to suddenly appear out of nowhere. Uh, Peter assumes that you're doing all of the usual things that you're commanded to do, right? Um, praying, studying scripture, uh, serving others, worshiping at home and with other Christians. The promise here is that by the grace of God, no matter what you may be going through otherwise, he will bring you through it by his grace, not by your strength, with a greater trust in him than you had previously. It's the next promise. The next promise is that God will strengthen you. And by this, again, he means spiritually, right? Um, they say, you know, anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I do not believe that. I think a great many things that do not kill you. I'm borrowing this line from Norm MacDonald, who used to be on Saturday Night Live. He said, uh, anything that does not kill you makes you really, really weak because it almost killed you. And I, I kind of agree with him. However, the promise here is, is strength, spiritual strength. And again, 
it's not, this is not gumdrops and rainbows here. Uh, this is spiritual strength for facing a dangerous world. A few verses before this blessing, Peter warned us to watch out. He says, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And the final promise here is that God will establish you. Now, this is kind of a consistent theme through Scripture. Read the 40th Psalm. That the, the, David sings that the God lifted him up out of the muddy mire and put his feet firmly upon a rock. Um, you need some place to, to stand, to be planted, to be settled. Um, many people, lots of people, spend their entire lives just vacillating, blowing here and there, searching for truth, if they haven't already given up on it, from fad to idea to whatever. Peter's promise is that those who stand firm will be established by God in the truth of Christ as if they were standing on an immovable rock, right? This isn't so much a promise of our strength. He's uh, already made those ones. It's a promise of rest. You are promised a place that you can stand and rest in Christ. Um, and why? why? Why would I believe this promise? Well, he tells me that this promise is made by the God of grace. And that's important because th this promise is made by the God who already has as a free gift to me, given by the, the blood of his son, the one true atoning sacrifice for my sin, that he has called me to himself, that he has given me all things that I need, and because I know of his grace in those other areas, why would I doubt that this God of grace wouldn't fulfill all of his promises to me, including this promise here? So after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen and amen. Hope to see you at 7.30. Read 1 Peter chapter 5, and there's a lot to talk about here.